I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Mel Gibson is kind of crazy. Hey, you want to see crazy? I'll tell you. <laughs> All actors slash directors are kind of crazy, but if they make great films, we will forgive them. An example of this is a man named Mel Gibson. He's everyone's favorite Australian, but New York is where he was born. He claims to have a Viking alter ego named Bjorn. I have an alter ego in me called Bjorn. <laughs> Bjorn. Bjorn. He was the sixth out of 11 children. The hanging scene in Braveheart almost really killed him. Mel Gibson is a controversial celebrity. His dad won a lot of money while playing Jeopardy. People's Magazine named him one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world in 1990, 91, and 96. Mel Gibson is a prankster. He loves to play tricks. And they are amazing pranks, as a matter of fact. Like surprising Julia Roberts with a toy cockroach and a real dead rat. Being goofy and silly is how he lives life. Once he put on a hockey mask and scared Jamie Lee Curtis with a knife. And he did the dead rat prank again to Helen Hunt. He also pretended to be a stalker of Nancy Myers. It's just a wacky fun little stunt. Some think that prank was a bit cruel. But it's okay, Nancy Myers stabbed Mel Gibson with a pencil. Mel Gibson sometimes is a great example of the American dream. He hung up naked pictures of Rene Russo all over the set of Ransom when she was just a teen. Mel Gibson loves to make the blood gush, and once he was roommates with a young Jeffrey Rush. His career kicked off with a post-apocalyptic thriller called Mad Max, directed by Happy Feet's George Miller. In Mad Max, the biker gangs were real, and once Mel Gibson ate sheep guts on Jay Leno. Such a tasty meal. Originally, he was cast as a biker freak because his face was busted up from a bar fight. Then he healed, and Miller saw his face and made him a star overnight. Mad Max has become a classic, considered one of the greats. Even though Mel Gibson's thick Aussie voice was redubbed in the States. People love Mad Max because it's gritty and raw. Some of the stunt driving was technically against the law. Mel Gibson's character was mentally challenged in a film called Tim, and so an Australian Film Institute award for best actor went to him. After this success, Mel Gibson wanted more, so he starred in a film about the First World War. Mel Gibson has worked really hard to fulfill his dreams, even though the director of Gallipoli said he's full of beans. A Mad Max sequel was fast on its way. Mel Gibson once again starred, but only had 16 lines to say. The film was renamed The Road Warrior to generate some Hollywood buzz, since no one outside of Australia knew who Mad Max was. This film has spectacular action, and the characters are freaky. It was named the 93rd greatest film of all time by Entertainment Weekly. The original cut was too violent, so the censors cut it down. Mel Gibson was the newest superstar in Tinseltown. I kind of want to stop everything and just watch this film right now. Mel Gibson cut his own hair, tore up his jacket, and even shaved his eyebrow. All Mad Max wants is just some gasoline. The Road Warrior was voted the greatest action film of all time by Rolling Stone magazine. The story is set in an unknown time and place, and it features a 13 minute long car chase. This film has awesome action. Boom, bang. Mel Gibson taught the feral child how to throw a boomerang. This film is the best Mad Max movie without a doubt. Well, that is until Fury Road came out. The Year of Living Dangerously was the next film Mel was making. The white woman Linda Hunt won an Oscar for playing a dwarf male Asian. Mel Gibson and director Peter Weir received death threats. I know, it's dumb. Extremists wanted to kill them because they thought the film offended Islam. In the film The Bounty, he had a strong supporting role. While filming, he developed a drinking problem and started to lose control. I am in hell! At first, the director of the river didn't want Mel. Thought he was too Australian and too young. But Mel Gibson begged and begged and learned to speak with a Tennessee tongue. At this time, Mel Gibson was king. He has risen. In the film Miss Sofal, they used a real prison. Next, he did another Mad Max film full of cars and murder. It was also full of little children and Tina Turner. This film was originally Lord of the Flies post-apocalypse. After Thunderdome, Mel took a break from acting, and many were shocked by this. Mr. Gibson was just sick and tired of the limelight. He would return to do Lethal Weapon when the time was right. But until then, he raised cattle for their beef. Did you know Mel Gibson was a mentor to Heath? 
he was finally cast in Lethal Weapon. That's the Mel we love and know. Not this stupid revamped, rebooted, remade TV show. This buddy cop movie became a real big hit. Mel Gibson put a bullet in the chamber of the gun to make it feel more realistic. You really are crazy. If you like controversy, well then Mel Gibson is your guy. In the first Lethal Weapon, 26 people die. <laughs> but people like violence, so what you gonna do? And the studio is like money, so they made Lethal Weapon 2. <laughs> On set, Richard Donner said Mel Gibson was quote unquote very professional and never reckless, even though he drank five pints of beer for every breakfast. In Lethal Weapon 2, they killed 33 people. Riggs died in the first draft, but they changed it so they could make yet another sequel. In Air America, Gibson worked with Robert Downey Jr. and helped Downey get sober. Years later, Downey would ask Hollywood to forgive Mel Gibson and not turn a cold shoulder. His favorite films include Big Country, Double Indemnity, and Spartacus, right on. No major studio wanted a Shakespeare film, so he founded the production company Icon. To be or not to be Hamlet, Mel chose to be. He got the part because of this scene in the first Lethal Weapon movie. By this time, Mel Gibson was a big Hollywood player. Carrie Fisher was the script doctor for Lethal Weapon 3. That's right, Princess Leia. He owns a tropical private island in Fiji, and only 17 people are killed in Lethal Weapon 3. Some call Mel Gibson a lover, and some call him a hater. He was in a film about a frozen guy, and Elijah Wood finds him 50 years later. People love him, people hate him, and some just don't care. The Man Without a Face was his first time in the director's chair. It was time for Mel Gibson to create his own cinematic art and he cast himself because no one else was good enough to play the part. Mel Gibson has a horseshoe kidney. Oh, damn. He was in a Western with James Garner based on James Garner's old TV program. While filming Maverick, he formed a friendship with Jodie Foster. They really, really like each other. Oh, look, and here's a cameo from Danny Glover. Hey! Oh, sorry. Give me that. This movie proves that westerns can be fun. Mel Gibson took special lessons to learn to draw a gun. At first he turned down Braveheart, I know it's hard to believe, but the idea stayed in his mind and would never leave. So he changed his mind and took the role. He also directed the film. It really took a toll. The Academy thought this film was really great. The physicality and stress of making Braveheart made Mel Gibson lose a lot of weight. The torture scene was censored because of too much guts and blood. Sometimes Mel Gibson directed using the voice of Elmer Fudd. These warriors showed their butts, and Mel Gibson showed his dedication. There were 105 consecutive shooting days on location. The Battle of Sterling took six weeks to shoot. They got 90 hours of footage. It's a good scene, but in real life there stood a bridge. <laughs> The film is great, but it's not very historically accurate. The blue paint was 800 years too late, and the kilts were hundreds too soon, and that ain't even half of it. By now, people are pretty used to Mel Gibson being weird. While playing William Wallace, he refused to grow a beard. It's hard not to get inspired when you hear William Wallace shout. Two weeks before the Oscars, he was having his appendix cut out. Well, like most directors, I suppose what I really want to do is act. Braveheart won Best Director and Best Picture. That's a lot. He brought in members of the Reserve Irish Army for battles, and some of them really fought. Mel Gibson is a man who often prays. The extras worked 14-hour days. They used real arrows to fly through the air. Mel Gibson lost $250 million in the 2008 recession because life is not fair. <laughs> it was time for Mel to do an animated film, something racist yet kid-friendly. So he voiced John Smith in Pocahontas from Disney. The film was released on July 23rd, 1995. That's the 400th birthday of Pocahontas, the, the real one who was actually alive. The real Pocahontas was much younger. There are many rights and wrongs. Mel Gibson sang all of his righteous songs. Mel Gibson is talented and very handsome. He starred in Ron Howard's film, Ransom. At times, Mel can be a maniac, and he is loved by Dot, the Animaniac. He is a wild man from that down-under nation. The opening scene of Conspiracy Theory was all improvisation. Machete Kills was his first time playing a baddie. And in Fairy Tale, a true story, he has a cameo as the daddy. And just like all of us, Mel is full of sin. Paul from David Letterman cut his skin. Then he did Lethal Weapon 4. That's the one after number 3. It has Chris Rock and actor Jet Li. Yeah. 
He put a cigar up his ass and gave it to Joe Pesci. When Mel Gibson is near, things can get messy. In this film, 30 people die, like this character. He's a goner. Mel Gibson has been in six films directed by Richard Donner. Gibson starred in the film Payback. He was a leading man on high demand. He got paid millions to play a guy who kills 15 people over 70 grand. Mel Gibson was a rooster in Chicken Run and brought us much laughter. The film was so good it inspired the Oscars to make a feature animation category the year after. This film has wacky wild poultry galore. It's basically the great escape but chickens are the prisoners of war. He did this film because his kids are Wallace and Gromit fans. That's really great of him. He has a lot of children, actually. I think there's like more than eight of them. Then came The Patriot, a violent revolutionary eyeful. Mel Gibson trained to use an old-timey muzzle-loading rifle. Many people love this film, but some say it's a popcorn lame fart. You can watch Mel Gibson kill more British people. It's an American brave heart. After a long day of shooting, the extra's spirits were low. To inspire them, Mel recited his Braveheart speech and put on a one-man show. Mel Gibson's character is based off of General Andrew Pickens mixed with the Swamp Fox. This film teaches us that American history rocks! But Hollywood took history and made a few tweaks. The soldiers had to go to boot camp for two weeks. Mel Gibson would practice this fight scene every day for the 100-day shoot. He made 25 million for this movie. That's a lot of loot. Mel Gibson is really messed up in his head there. And in What Women Want, he actually waxed his leg hair. His dad questions the Holocaust and is very critical of Pope John Paul. For We Were Soldiers, they shot 150 hours of film. It took six days just for the editor to watch it all. Mel Gibson's films are beautiful. Every frame is a painting. Navy SEALs show this movie to inspire the recruits before training. Some Vietnamese actors in this movie had actually been in the North Vietnamese Army. Mel Gibson's antics are rather alarming. He loves Jesus and the Holy Virgin. The actors went to boot camp, but Mel called it the celebrity wimp version. He starred in a film about a man with aliens on his lawn with two other crazies, Joaquin Phoenix and Shyamalan. Ah! I'm insane with anger! On the phone, Mel Gibson said some nasty racist bad words. On the science call sheet, his name was written backwards. With the power of God and water, he fights monsters from the stars in space. M. Night wanted all the signs posters without the movie star's face. Mel Gibson really gets to show off his acting powers. The dramatic dinner table scene was shot in only three hours. Mel Gibson is only human and all humans are flawed. In The Singing Detective, he is bald. And with his next film, the box office took a lashing when Mel Gibson made his passion project, The Passion. <laughs> This may be the craziest thing he's ever done. Make a blockbuster in Latin and Aramaic about the death of God's son. Jesus Christ is one of his idols. Originally, Gibson didn't want to include music or subtitles. Gibson did research on the film for over a decade, but it was worth the wait. The Passion of the Christ is banned in Kuwait. And you see those hands? Well, those are Mel's. This is symbolic of his sins hammering in the nails. There was poltergeist activity on the set in a supernatural kind of way. So Mel Gibson had a priest bless the set and held mass every day. The actress who played Satan only ate rice and beans to appear sick and unhealthy. This movie made Mel Gibson even more wealthy. Upon its release, this film was a pretty big deal. After becoming suicidal, Mel Gibson made this film to help his spirit heal. Many members of the cast and crew converted to Catholicism after working on The Passion of the Christ. The assistant director was struck by lightning, not once, but twice. And here's something that is truly, truly frightening. While playing Jesus, Jim Caviezel was also struck by lightning. Caviezel suffered from hypothermia while filming in the winter in Italy. Mel Gibson said that there were miracles on set, literally. During production, people were healed of diseases. Some had sight and hearing restored. This film had a budget that only God and Mel Gibson could afford. Some would say that this film gives off an anti-Semitic feel. They accidentally whipped Jim Caviezel a couple times for real. This film really left Caviezel beaten, battered, and bruised. The cross fell on him, which separated his shoulder. But that's the take Mel Gibson used. This film is an amazing, wonderful, holy, violent mess. Jim Caviezel needed heart surgery because of his injuries and stress. It's a movie about the Romans kicking Christ's keister. Mel Gibson's planning a sequel, which would be about Easter. This film will kill you, if you know what I mean. 
a woman actually died from heart failure while watching the crucifixion scene. While researching the life of Mel Gibson, I came across a lot of info. One of his craziest films ever is called Apocalypto. <laughs> this film is action-packed and violent that you cannot ignore. Many of the actors had never acted before. This is one of Mel Gibson's epic historical spectacles. The first scene features a character eating taper testicles. This film will cut out your heart and bash in your brain. Waldo appears in a single frame. This film is really graphic. It shows the horrific slaughter and all. To inspire the actor, Mel Gibson jumped off the movie set Waterfall. After trying to deal with his troubles and not drink beers, Mel Gibson was cast in Edge of Darkness, his first starring role in eight years. Well, you had better decide whether you're hanging on the cross or banging in the nails. Jesus says to forgive, but are you a believer? Next, Mel Gibson put his hand inside Jodie Foster's beaver. At times the film is funny and at times it is scary. This film was originally going to star Jim Carrey. Just the concept, the story, and the frickin' plot of this drama is crazy. This film was shelved when Mel was accused of assaulting the mama of his baby. Next, he did an unauthorized payback sequel, Get the Gringo. He wanted Steve Jobs to be in the film, but he said no. Is Mel Gibson crazy? Well, yes. Yes is the answer. But he's also friendly and helped an extra get treatment for cancer. Mel Gibson almost starred in Die Hard Terminator Batman in the film about 9-11. He also turned down playing Two-Face, Wolverine, Clinton, Elliot Ness, and 007. He had a cameo in Casper because he's very famous. And things got awkward at the Golden Globes with Ricky Gervais. Mel Gibson is a troubled man and has some issues, I guess. It took him one week to film his scenes for Machete Kills with Robert Rodriguez. He produced the sitcom Complete Savages and even had a small part. Mel Gibson has been a character on The Simpsons, Family Guy, and South Park. Not every man truly lives, but every man dies. Mel Gibson went to AA because of his many DUIs. Mel Gibson then played the villain in Expendables 3. His character was a former Special Air Service regiment operative. This is a reference to the film Attack Force Z. Even after all the scandals, Mel Gibson continues to push his career farther. He was really, really good in that film Blood Father. Mel Gibson built his own church and they have mass every day to connect with the Holy Spirit. There's some nasty Mel Gibson audio out there. Did you hear it? His drinking problem caused him to really struggle. He's also bipolar and loves to juggle. He called Batman v Superman a piece of shit. He thinks that movie is wrecked. Mel Gibson is not very politically correct. Not politically correct? I don't know what that means. What does not politically correct mean? I don't know. When Mel Gibson gets drunk, he says horrible things. Wow. But then he made a critically acclaimed World War II film and everyone kind of likes him now. Hacksaw Ridge is the true story of a man who served his nation. The Venice Film Festival gave it a 10 minute standing ovation. It took 14 years to get this film made. It's Mel's first directing job in over a decade. The violence in Mel's movies is always a big deal. But this time, his main character actually refuses to kill. Mel Gibson's life is crazy, but at times it's been fun. Hacksaw Ridge stars Spider-Man and Vince Vaughn. Well, I think I've said it all, or maybe I'm confused. Oh yeah, there was that stuff he said while drinking alcohol about the Jews. When Mel Gibson gets drunk, he can sure be dumb. But I always get chills when he screams free dumb. Free dumb.